So the Glen Farkless handicap next. This is a cross country race, so I don't normally do this one. And looks to me, I wasn't expecting to do it this season, to be honest, but it's should be quite interesting. It's three miles and seven furlongs, 0 to 160. And at the top, we've got Landlark for Craig Beckwith, Dawn of the New Age, Joshua Sutherland, Acaster Malvis, Darren Thompson, Southside Kevin Meanhan, Moral Fat Leon Van Rensburg, Watchtower. Graham Clutterbuck, Houston Obsessive, Vinnie Gerrard, Madeline Rose, Padraig Hogan, Classic Ben, David Hooley, Captain Marin, Martin Lee, the Mardronic, Harold, Graham Clutterbuck, right on cue, David Hooley, Pride of America, Paul Rhodes, Paul Tiller, Alex Cherry and Maggie's Saucier for Obi-Wan. So 15 of the men called in and away in this unique race, very short run to the first and all safely over it, apart from Watchtower, who's gone. So Watchtower is out of the race. Uh, Graham Clutterbuck's got another one in there, which is the one that he fancied the most. He did say to me that he didn't think Watchtower would stay the trip. Uh, I think he thought it might get further than the first. Anyway, they're all over the second net, and the top weight Landlark and Acaster Malbis have gone off. We've got to be careful these two don't cut each other's throats because they've both got big weights and they both like to go from the front. And it's Acaster Malbis who's just got the lead. Um, Landlock in second, and then a gap of four or five lengths back to the rest of them, who are just about headed by Houston Obsessive as they come down to the third of the 33 fences they've got to take in this. This is by far the biggest jumping test in terms of quantity that we're going to see this week. And rather different obstacles as well, but most of them take a bit of jumping. They're all safely over the fifth. It's a very short run to the sixth. Uh, you need a specific type of horse for this race, and if you get a specialist in this then you're going to have a much better chance than if you just got a normal park horse there are a couple that claim to be specialists in this ironic harold for captain mannering and oh, sorry. <laughs> let's not get over this seventh ironic harold for graham clutterbuck i wasn't <laughs> suggesting that graham clutterbuck was in any way shape or form like captain mannering captain mannering is in fact my horse and there's the other one that is the Course specialist as they get over the eighth, which is the giant hurdle, and they're all safely over that one. And we did have a discussion about it in the preview show, but unfortunately, you didn't get to hear it because we were having microphone problems, and that was a part of the bit that got cut out. And um, at the start of the segment, Gray was convinced that his would win, and by the end of the segment, I convinced him that mine would win. So let's see what happens. And it's Acaster Malvis who's won the battle to lead and has gone six lengths clear I think Landlark has the jockey on that one seen the sense of not trying to match a Castor Malvis for the lead with a big weight and they get over the tenth and one or two of them ballooned it and as a faller Dawn of the New Age is gone so it's Dawn of the New Age is the second top weight and is a pretty decent horse over the ordinary fences but it shows you how this course can catch out some of the good ones Dawn of the New Age will more than likely be the national next week I would think one of those all the top class long distance races but it's Acaster Malbis who's in the lead by about six as they come to this bank this is where we really need Stu commentate on this one because he knows all these little intricacies of all these um, fences and what they're called and everything and I don't think he's got a runner in it has he no which is maybe a surprise because I think he quite likes these sort of races but anyway it's Acaster Malbis who's two lengths clear as they get to this big water no matter how big they make those water jumps, we never see anything fall over at them. It must be coded into the game that there's never a fall on the water. Anyway, it's Acaster Malvis, who's four lengths clear of Landlark in second. As they get to this little bank where there's a hurdle at each end, well, almost a hurdle sized Grand National fence. As Acaster Malvis then races away with a lead of about six lengths or so to Landlark in second, Madeline's Rose has moved through into third, ironic Harold. Is close up in fourth. Then comes Houston Obsessive. Bit of a gap then to Captain Mannering and right on cue. With the grey behind that one south side. As they get to the next. Which they're all over. Although Padre Hogan's battle and Rose didn't jump it all that well. Classic Ben is also struggling a bit towards the back with Maggie's saucy air. But it's Acaster Malbis who's clearing the lead by four. To Landlark second. Houston Obsessive third. Ironic Harold fourth. Then Madeline Rose, Captain Mannering, right on cue, south side. And then Paul Satilla, with moral fact, as they come back to this bank. And over that they go. And we'll safely over that one. Acaster Malbus is lead down to two now. As Landlark and Houston Obsessive are in pursuit. They're being followed by the two core specialists, Ironic Harold and south side. 
Then Captain Manor and right on cue. Madeline Rose is after that one. Then Paul Satilla as they take the 20th of the 33. They're all safely over that. Captain Manor in one over this course and distance earlier in the season. The only other race in the season where we use this course. It was a pretty easy win for him, but there were only three in it. He's since then, gone on to win the Welsh Grand National. So they get over this big ditch. And it's Acaster Malbis and Houston Obsessive. Landlock in third. As they get to the next, then Ironic Harold and Captain Manor in south side. The grey looks to be going well. Then Madeline Rose recall from that mistake right on cue. He's still there as well. Then Paul Satilla and Moral Fact and Pride of America. And then Classic Ben. And finally Maggie's a saucy air as they run past that funny bank thing this time. I want to think the hardest thing for the leading jockey in this race is going to be making sure you go the right way. Because plenty of options to go the wrong way. As they get to this giant water jump. And they're all safely over it. With Acaster Malbus in front. With Houston Obsessive second. Landlark is in third. Then Ironic Harold. As they get to the next. And ah, there's a fall there. Padraig Hogan's Madeline Rose has gone. So made a couple of mistakes. And has finally parted company there with the jockey. Madeline Rose. So three out now. As they take the 25th. And ironic Harold was right on his nose there. And has almost surrendered fourth place to Captain Manorin. But it's Acaster Malbus in the lead. Landlark second. Houston Obsessive third. And then Ironic Harold and Captain Manorin together. South side behind them with right on cue as they get over the next. And down on his nose that time was moral fact. And they're inside the final mile now. And Acaster Malbus being pushed along in the lead. And we made a right mistake there. He really... Hit that one hard, but he's still the leader. With Houston obsessive and landlock close up, then comes Ironic Harold and Moral Fact and Paul Satilla and right on cue and Southside and Captain Manor in and then Pride of America. And they race down towards the next. With A Caster Malbis, two lengths up again. From Houston Obsessive in second. And then Paul Satilla has come through into third as they get over the next. Ironic Harold on the inside is fourth, then comes Moral Lark, Moral Foot and the Landlark is getting there, right on cues there as well as they race down that bank and they now make their way towards the next and over that one they go on, Captain Mannerin's gone! Captain Mannerin's a faller! So one of the really fancied runners has gone there, uncharacteristic mistake and fall for Captain Mannerin over to third last and Acaster Malbis a shot clear, Paul Satilla's a fall this time and it's Acaster Malbis under a big weight who's about seven lengths clear of Moral Fact in second, right on cue is third, Pride of America fourth Fourth, Ironic Harold with work to do in fifth. Southside is trying to run on. Surely nothing else can win this then now. They've still got three furlongs to go and two to jump. And it's Acaster Malbus in the lead from Pride of America who's now come through in a second. Right on cue is back in third. Surely David Newley can't win again. It's Acaster Malbus in the lead but the weight's beginning to tell. He lightly weighted. Pride of America's coming through on the outside. At the second last they go. Acaster Malbus jumped it the best but look at this. Right on cue. Right on cue now. Right on cue and Pride of America as they come down to the last over it they go and a better jump by Pride of America Pride of America is now in front and leads by about half a length right on cue he's trying to fight back also running on classic Ben A. Castamalus has got nothing left the grey south side is running on as well but it's Pride of America in the lead and Pride of America races up towards the line and Pride of America is going to take the cross country for Paul Rhodes Pride of America wins it right on cue second south side third classic Ben fourth A. Castamalus stuck on for fifth ironic Harold was after that one and all the way back to top weight landlark and the fancied runners didn't really show in that in the end and Pride of America has taken it at a massive price for Paul Rhodes the professor gets on the Cheltenham scoreboard and Pride of America takes it for Paul Rhodes right on cue for David Hooley second what a day he's having Southside Kevin Meanham third classic Ben David Hooley again in fourth and Acaster Malwis a brave attempt to win from the front for Darren Thompson was fifth